What's going on to all my gamers and gamers? This your boy Kano, the brutally honest gamer, and I'm back with another video. Now, people may know like what's going on with my channel, why I call it the honest gamer. Well, I'll let you know at the end of this video. So, with that being said, this whole ordeal of this video is basically about my personal predictions and slash wish list that I would want to see on NBA 2K22 at this point. And everybody know I like the 2K series, but lately the 2K series, as far as the NBA side, has been in a decline rate of a lot of hiccups and mess ups within the game. So I'm gonna basically go ahead and talk about like my wish list or what I would like to see in the NBA 2K franchise as far as NBA 2K22 at this point because NBA 2K21, the next gen version was a travesty. And I believe what they're doing is they be doing a little sneaky fixes under the rug that they don't say nothing about that be messing up the game. So let's go ahead and dive right into what I'm saying. And these are like six of them that I'm actually gonna uh, talk about in this video. Now, for number one, it's definitely the jump shot changes. As you may see of NBA 2K21, we actually had a different type of shot meter, which technically resembles NBA 2K16, but not really. It's just really over the head and stuff like that. And it's really terrible. Now, when NBA 2K21 was first released on the last gen consoles, everybody know that in the beginning, it, it didn't even matter what difficulty you played it on. If you were to play it even on the rookie difficulty, you would still have a hard time trying to make the shot. And that was obvious, and that was an actual factual, nothing rational. Everybody was pissed off about it. Even Damon Glillard actually tweeted that uh, he couldn't even make no jump shots within the game. And he was even pissed about it. And then they had to correct that situation. Okay? So, my personal gripe for NBA 2K21 on the jump shot part was, let's say you actually is a 99 overall and you have a three point jump shot ratio of at least 94, right? I believe like 90% of the time you should be making the uh, three point shots even if you're wide open. And this is with the meter on. When you shoot it and you even when you get close to a green on the line of the green release where you're supposed to be there, you don't get a green release and it ends up missing. Now when you take the jump shot meter off and when you shoot the three point shot, you're still supposed to be able to make the three Obviously, you're not when you're wide open, and they need to correct that mistake. You feel me? Especially if you're playing on a pro difficulty or a rookie difficulty, you should be able to make the shots more. Now, I feel I feel like as far as Hall of Fame, it should stay where it's at, where, it's, where you really have to pinpoint and be accurate on shooting a three-point shot or any shot that you make within the game. They definitely have to correct that for NBA 2K22 point blank period and everybody know i'm not lying about it because the jump shot on the last gen version of nba 2k21 was terrible and the next gen version of it was even worse so they're going to have to correct that and make that change i feel like they need to go back to the jump shot ratio of how it was on nba 2k16 and nba 2k17 those were two was like the best jump shots in the game hell even nba 2k11 and 12 had some of the best jump shots in the game where you could actually shoot make it and they actually fixed the ratio that was on point when you actually created your my player you feel me for my career now uh, number two, what I want to talk about is the My Career Story. Now, don't get me wrong. NBA 2K16 and 17's My Career Story was actually fantastic. Even uh, 14 and 15's story was actually fantastic. Uh, where it went downhill at was NBA 2K18, where it didn't make any sense on the character you created. Now, well, this is what I would like to see in NBA 2K22 as far as the My Career Story. Don't just go as far as the prelude and... Uh, first year into the story i think it should have an expand of i believe about two to three seasons because there's a lot that be going through that people be going through my fault players with their what they be going through within the each year you know what i'm saying especially within the off season i think they should have actually have a story um i feel like they should uh make a choice and how it affects chemistry all types of stuff and not only that i think they should have a story it's a peep game right you could actually have 
I think, honestly, when it comes to NBA 2K22, they need to have a lot more choices within the game. And any choice that you make will affect the chemistry and in the fan base ratio even more thoroughly through. Like, let's say if you want to play in college, anything you do in college really would affect the draft stock if you get, like, get into a fight with another uh with the opposite team do anything that's wrong it can affect the draft stock i feel like when it comes down to when you actually play on a team how the chemistry is actually on the team in a better formality like if there's stuff you don't agree with like if you call somebody out on your team it can affect the uh chemistry stuff like that the off season whatever you do can affect i feel like like there's a saying every bad action has consequences but every good deed reaps its reward so i feel like within nba 2k22 my career story it should have that and i feel like when with, with the story itself i think it's concrete and evidential that when it comes to the my career story it needs to be deeper i feel like continuous start off in, in high school but make it into like a real deep story to the point where it has like you're on the rise but then you fall then you're back on the rise again in that type of scenario and just fix it to where the story will be unique in its own way and not only that make like i said earlier on this uh wish list make sure it goes through multiple seasons you know that would definitely be beneficial in the long run for this actual uh career story on uh, my player aspect of it well my career aspect of it now number three they need to better they're my park or the city or the neighborhood or whatever they call it and i'm gonna say it like this i think what they really need to do is create the affiliation parks again like they did in 2k16 that was one of the best parks uh, scenarios that we actually have instead of like how the city was the city was just so bland it didn't have nothing going on in the city and then we had to use uh do rookieville in 2k21 that that didn't make any sense on the next gen consoles that i feel like we should just run through the city get stuff get clothes whatever whoop de woo i just feel like we need to bring the affiliation parks back you feel me 2k16 had done it well where they have multiple uh, places where you can play three on three, two on two. If you want to play one on one or one on one, one versus one versus one, that would be dope. You feel me? They need to add that back to affiliation. That would be a good look. And not only that, fix their servers because in the city of the next gen version of 2K21, it was terrible. The servers was so bad that you can't, whenever you play a game, and when you shoot the ball, or whatever, or when you run up and down the court, you end up outside the court. And when you actually win the game or whatever, your rep doesn't go up. So they're going to have to fix that in 2K22. And I hope that they do a, a phenomenal job on that aspect to fix the service and give us the affiliation uh, parks back. That would be phenomenal for NBA 2K22. You did. Now, number four. Since we know that now Take Two Interactive, they want to charge us an arm and a leg, you know, for the seventy dollar price point. Let's go ahead and talk about it. If they're going to charge us seventy dollars for the price point of NBA Two K Twenty Two, they need to lower the microtransactions and have us give us more easier ways to get VC within the game, because. If we're playing in my career and we're getting drafted to one of the teams of anybody's selection and we're overall at 60, that's not going to fly. And then y'all making us pay $70 games and just giving us 5,000 VC. If y'all making us pay a $70 game, y'all should at least give us between 50 to 75,000 VC. That's that's a, a reasonable price, you know what I'm saying, for us to have the right amount of VC for the game, $70. If y'all want to charge 80 or, or $100, Give us like 150,000 VC or like a hundred twenty uh dollar game. Give us about a 250 to 300,000 VC and give us uh all the attributes, boosts, and stuff like that for the uh for your my career and stuff on my team. I feel like that would be the best way to go. But you know how how uh visual concepts and take two interactive is they're money hungry, they're anti consumer, so it's obvious that's what's going to happen. They need to lower that microtransactions because it's going to get to the point where there are going to be other NBA games coming out. Hopefully NBA Live come out to give us some more competition because right now the visual concepts and, and Take Two Interactive and the NBA 2K franchise, they got very lazy. To me, I feel like they don't know what they're doing. 
it is is a travesty. They need to lower the microtransactions ASAP, starting with NBA 2K22. Because if that's the case, more people are going to actually gravitate to that game and play that game in a major way. That's a fact. Now, number five, they're going to have to, like I said on number four, they're going to have to lower that price range back to $60. And like I said before, it's the microtransaction situation. If they charging seventy dollars for a game that's really not worth seventy dollars, and you giving us just five thousand VC, and we have to pay thirty, forty dollars for extra VC, that's gonna make everybody in their mom mad to the point where nobody really ain't gonna gravitate and buy NBA 2K on their levels like they once was on the levels of NBA 2K11 and NBA 2K12 at this point. And I'm telling y'all the truth about that. You feel me? Because $60 is the best way to go. And not only that, honestly, the $60 price range is is great. Because if you're looking at the $70 price range, it's just basically a cop-out. Because they made up excuses talking about how they uh, updated their engines and stuff like that. No, they haven't. If you look at the next-gen version of NBA 2K21, graphically, it looks better than NBA 2K21 of the last-gen. But if you look at it, obviously, it's not that much different on the court. And if you look at the city, the service was terrible. I don't see why it was a $70 game. And they made uh, major mistakes on the aspects of how this game is. You feel me? We still going through problems to this day on NBA 2K21 with their updates and st stability. We still can't get the jump shots correctly. Even if we take the boost off, it still is not going to help you. Because personally for me, I have a two-way sharpshooter. He's a 99 overall. And he shoots a threes at a 94 uh, overall. But he's still not making the jump shot properly. You feel me? And I tested it out on difficulties. Like the pro difficulty, I should be making jump shots. Like a lot more jump shots than frequently. That's not the case. Then the same scenario goes on the other difficulties. The Hall of Fame, hell, I can't even make a jump shot to, uh, to save my life on that game. So, that's an L on that point. So, if they're going to charge us $60, I mean $70 for this game, they better do it justice. Because if not, I hope NBA Live comes out. I hope, you know, other NBA games come out. Hell, I even hope THQ Nordic, they actually get a studio to create an NBA type of game. Hell, People, if NBA Street ever comes out on from EA, nobody ain't going to be playing on 2K. And, and NBA Street also have online if they do that. And they don't have no microtransactions. Bro, everybody's going to be playing NBA Street. Nobody ain't going to be playing on 2K. That's a fact. You feel me? That's that's 100% fact. So, last thing I'm going to say before I get off this video, and I got something to say about this at the end, is another thing that they're going to have to clean up and fix on this game is the badges. Everybody know within the badges, most of these badges is uh, useless and broken at this point. Like, if you look at the Dead Eye uh, badge on 2K21, next gen version, it's non-existent. You really ain't doing nothing with it. And it don't even show up when you shoot the ball. You feel me? There's a lot of different badges within this game that they use for next gen that was broken, was useless, was non and void if they're going to do this game right and force us to use the badges within this game they're going to have to do it justice i one of them they took out the game was uh a reflex i forgot it was some with re reflex it was on the last gen version give us that it was cool for the last gen version they should have kept that for the new gen um not only that there is so many badges within this game that is useless you feel me? So many badges that are useless and doesn't even work on the game. So they're going to have to fix that with NBA 2K22 to better it, make it into uh, where we have to use it, but it will work when we use it. You did? So that's really all I got to say about NBA 2K22, what, what my personal wish list is. Hopefully they better it, right their wrongs, and get it correct and get their mind right. You feel me? Mike Wayne, Ronnie 2K. They're going to actually have to fix this game to make it better. And Ronnie 2K, don't don't come on your live stream and start lying when they start making more headlines about NBA 2K22. Tell the truth like it is. Don't be sitting on there lying about certain things that's going to be featured in the game and it's really not there. I know you the hype man that want to hype up the game and make sure the game is on point. But don't sit on there lying to the people that really loves this game. Because if you sitting on there and you lying, you're not telling the truth. 
people are going to hate you even more. They already hate you now, but they're going to hate you even more. So I'm going to leave it on that note. But before I even get off this video, man, let me go ahead and tell you this. Now, people may know I had the channel Kano's Gaming Section. I changed it because I want to make a channel that suits me because I always keep it real. In my opinion, it's my opinion, but I'm being honest about my opinion because this is actually how I feel. So I changed it to The Honest Gamer. I am the brutally honest gamer. I'm still Kano, but I'm the brutally honest gamer. I'm gonna tell it like it is. People may like it, people may not like it, but I ain't gonna cut no corners. You feel me? I'm gonna tell it like it is. I'm gonna tell the truth. This is what this channel is about. Everything opinionated is my opinion in the gaming culture. You dig? So, that being said though, and I'm sorry for not making uh, content like I should on this channel. Uh, like I said, I've been revamping this channel and also I've been gearing up uh, hitting up game devs and stuff like that getting interviews and stuff like that because I'm preparing with the crew with the gamer section summer game madness Y'all basically go subscribe to the channel on YouTube. That's link in the description below and not only that go ahead and uh, follow my fault Go ahead and follow the gamer section twitch because we're gonna be live streaming every day from June 1st to August 31st You feel me and we got a lot of stuff planned. So y'all definitely stay tuned So with that being said make sure you like share comment and subscribe on this video and what do y'all think y'all what are y'all thoughts about NBA 2K22 and what do y'all actually want to see within not only just uh my career but any other aspects of NBA 2K22 man y'all let me know you feel me I'm out and uh stay safe peace